Back on Sports Center, Western Conference Finals, game one by way of review. The Mavericks in many to open. Now, following game seven versus Denver, Anthony Edwards, he had this to say about his matchup with Kyrie Irving. Because, you know, you win, you're, you're, you're ready to take on anybody. It's going to be fun, man. You know, um, my, my matchup going to be Kyrie, so that's going to be fun. We're going to see what I, what I can do versus him. I admire the aggressiveness. It's not always that fun because Kyrie is still really good offensively, and he attacked Ant and everybody else. He was four of five in the first half against Edwards, three of three against Jaden McDaniels, and he was two of three in transition. Add up all those uh, four and threes and the twos and three. 24 points in the first half. He had 30 in the game. First half for the Mavericks, Luka had 14. Fairly quiet. Fourth quarter, he had 15 when he just took things over. There he hits the step back over McDaniels and Dallas is down 89-88. They traded the lead several times. Doncic nails the contested three. So now the Mavs are up 91-89. We move forward into the fourth. Mavs trail by four. Doncic again got Ant on him. Shoots right over. Mavericks trail 102-101. Love the step back one-legged thing. Kick it out. Minute later, Doncic uh, stealing. Now we just move it around. Irving over to P.J. Washington. He likes the corner shots. Hits the three. Mavs lead 104-102. Minute to go. Same score. Two-point game. Doncic. Um, now you got a two-possession game. That's a little more tough to work around. Doncic Irving scored or assist on 88 of the Mavs, 108. Here's Kyrie's view of it all. I was feeling good in the first quarter and, and just settling, um, you know, where we are. And it's Western Conference Finals. A lot of anxiety, some nerves. Uh, I've been here before, so a little bit more poise on my end, just uh, being able to start the game with the confidence and that aggression. You know, he probably probably will be down 20 if he wouldn't score that many points. Uh, so I appreciate him uh, keeping us in the game. And he looked really comfortable on there also on the court. So obviously we know he's a very um, skilled player, very creative player, but we got to find ways to um, make his life a little tougher. Bonus info here now. Kyrie Irving, Luca, four starting backcourt to each have 30 points in multiple games in the postseason the last 50 years. They also had 30 points each in their playoff opener against the Clippers. It should be pointed again. The Jason Kidd Mavs team won the opener of a series. That's big. With such a star-studded series, Stephen A., say that 10 times fast, who do you think will be the most important star? I'm going to go with Kyrie Irving. Okay. Um... I said it the other day, I'm going to say it again. I can't applaud this brother enough for what he has done this year. I mean, I'm not just talking about his sensational play. I'm talking about the leadership um, and the fact that we know he closes 14-0 and in closeout games. Throughout these playoffs, this dude will amp it up. I mean, he got like two or four points in the first half, and then he's like, okay, calm down. Just, just, just give me the ball. I'll, I'll handle this. You know, he has – that it factor going for him right now. We know what Anthony Edwards brings to the table. We know what Luka can bring to the table. But Kyrie, in assassin's mode, picking his spots the way I've been watching him do this year, particularly in these playoffs, it, when that brother gets going, it galvanizes the rest of the team in a way that I see positively affecting them, and I think that's going to be needed mm. against that Minnesota defense in order for the Dallas Mavericks yeah. to win this series. Yeah, and I'm kind of like Bob. I don't agree with you all the time, but on that one, <laughs> on that one, I agree with Good. you, man. Quick. Kai, uh -oh. Kai, Kai is so tough. Kai is so tough, and I think a lot of times people don't realize you can have great players or whatnot. Sometimes that can get you to almost like the 15, 10-yard line. Kai is going to pull you over the goal line. The way he's playing, not only on the offensive end, but the defensive end, right? When you look at stars, that's what you want to see. You at least want to see them compete on the defensive end, and you just see his leadership and how the younger guys just follow him. And when I'm watching the game and I see that Kai got four points, six points in the first half, the other team better be up 30. Right. <laughs> they better be up 40. Because he's coming. Because he, he's definitely going to put his imprint on the game, and he picks his spots. And that's why the marriage between him and Luka has been – Seamless. They need it last year, but now they know how to pick their spots. There's no way to disagree with what they're saying about Kyrie and his play this year. There just isn't. But I'm going to pick somebody else. I'm going to go with Luka. And there's some things. It's hard. Luka can be hard to watch because I'm tired of seeing this every trip down he, the court. He did a little bit better. He got, well, he, got he did a little for bit. a while. He did for a while. He did for a couple games. Out a bit. But despite that, you know what? When it comes to just running a team, and just sheer playmaking. 
He is, to me, passing the basketball. He is in a discussion now with Magic and Bird. The stuff he... Oh. I mean, he has turned two players that showed up a minute and a half ago into Lob City. Yeah. It's unbelievable how he can just take advantage of a defense and surgically Absolutely destroy young. it. He's so much stronger than people realize. Oh. And by the way, Chris, playing through these injuries that he's played through now, and I know you've had to play against him late in the season, but, but the knee... Yeah. Knees, uh, the back. Thank he's you. doing things now that other team. And Kyrie mentioned this the other day. He's doing things that teammates look at and say, damn. I mean, he, he's really, he is, he is galvanizing us now. He's rallying us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to my answer because um, I don't want to agree with Oh, now the preamble's like, I'll coming? I'll agree with Chris. Is that, is that the warning? Uh, people ask me one time, what, what did you help Steph with? I said, I, the only advice I ever gave him was his body language. That's it. Because early on in his career, he, 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 he's prone to some crazy turnovers mm. or, or swings. And he would go like this. <laughs> and he would put his head down. And I told him one time, I said, you don't know the power of your body language. And he knows this as a player. Yeah. And I, so I watched Kyrie's body language. So good yes. in these playoffs. So good defensively. He's leading that team. Yep. Who would have thought Kyrie? I did not think, and this is a credit to him, that he could lead a basketball team. He's the leader of that team. Luka Doncic is their best player right now, and I think he's very important. But the, the player I'm going to say is Carl Anthony Towns because if he's great, I think Edwards is going to show up. Okay, I think Edwards is going to show up, just talent alone, and he has a power and a force about his game. They're going to they're put some defenders on him, but, but I'm not sure who can guard him. They're going to probably put Derek Jones on Anthony. It doesn't matter. He, he, he's going he's gonna to attack this team. But Carl Anthony Towns... He plays like he did in Game 7 against Denver. He shows up consistently. He's got to stay out of foul trouble. Yeah. He's a real big X factor ass, in, in the series. And I know it's a big well ass, post, but, but I'm saying if he can do it, I, I think Minnesota has a great chance of winning the series. Can we talk a little bit about Minnesota and specifically Anthony Edwards? Because one thing that I know I loved, gentlemen, is when in his postgame interview, after they close out the defending champions, yep. he's saying, I want to... What did you like? What was the difference in this ball game to your best uh, guess estimation? of why the Mavs were able to go on the road and beat the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves, the red-hot Minnesota Timberwolves. You know, um, you know, game one is usually the easiest one for the road because it's on the pressure of the home team to get the first one. So I thought irritating um, Kyrie by Ant-Man saying publicly, I'm going to guard him. Kyrie <laughs> on goal mode in the first half, right? Yes. The Kyrie we've seen in the second half is what Kyrie we've been seeing um, in the last two rounds. He's just being, he's just letting the game come to him. But the fact that, you know, Ant-Man. You challenged him. You challenged him, and, and that's <laughs> not the dude you want to do that to. So <laughs> he carried them in the first half while Luka was struggling, and then they switched roles in the second half. Then that's the great thing about having two guys who can do the same thing, that when one is – Lacking, the other one picks up the slack. So I thought they did a great job, and the two stars played great when they needed to be um, there. Ocho? I mean, listen, I told you who I picked to win the series. The Mavs got away with one. I think Ant-Man poking the bear. Um, I'm not going to say upsetting Kyrie, but just challenging Kyrie. Kyrie was up for the challenge. He showed us, he showed the rest of the world what he's capable of doing. He's one of those people, like a light switch, he can turn it on when he wants to. Um, again, in the first half, he showed out. He made a statement because mm -hmm. he was challenged. In the second half, I think he put it in cool control, and Luka Doncic took over from that point on. Um, I mean, it was cool. It was a good game. The Mavs got this one, but we know who's going to win the series. Listen, the Mavs won the battle tonight, but the war, they will not win. <laughs> You know what, Gil, I don't know if you uh, uh, and Ocho. Yes, sir. I was surprised how well the Mavericks rebounded the ball mm. because you got seven-plus feet, Rudy Gobert. You got seven-foot cat. You got 6'10", 6'11", Naz Reed. Mm -hmm. You go 6'8", Jane Daniels. So I thought they would have a substantial, because that's what Minnesota do. They beat you up on the glass mm -hmm. because they can get rebound after rebound because they're always going to have a seven-footer on the court. Either Cat yeah. or Rudy going to be on the court or Naz Reed. So you're going to go 6'10 or above for 48 minutes of the ball game. So you knowing that being said, Dallas out rebounded them by eight. Mm -hmm. I was surprised by how well Dallas points in the paint. Now, we know Minnesota uh, and can live in the paint, but for the most part, they get their, you know, Cat want to shoot threes. 
Nav Reed can go inside, mm -hmm. but he's going to shoot three. Jaden Daniels was six of eight. McDaniels was six of eight from the three. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm really surprised by how well that about uh, how few points in the paint that Minnesota have, given mm -hmm. the way they play the game, Gil. Yeah, you know, uh, Rudy's going to have 10 points, 12 points. They're going to be dunked. That's going to be in the paint. And can slash to the basket. But for mm -hmm. the most part, they're going to be shooting the ball from the outside. But I was surprised by how well the Mavericks rebounded the basketball and how good a job they did of defending Cat, how what job they did of defending Ant. Uh, Ant got a couple of baskets, and you know, he's a great player. He's going to get his basket. Mm -hmm. But I thought they did a good job overall limiting the damage that he could possibly do in this game. Yeah, they, um, they took um... – they did what Denver started to do with Ant-Man in game um, six and seven, right? Doubling them, keeping them out of the paint, right? Because when Ant-Man is driving and getting those fouls, putting pressure on the defense, right, it, it opens up everything. So the fact that they kept him out of the lane uh, made him take tougher shots than he wanted to, making him second guess uh, some of those mid-range jumpers that he's, he's used to taking. You know Cat is going to sit around the three-point line. Rudy Goldberg yeah. is not a factor on offense unless he's getting to put back or he's right under the basket. Um, Nas Reed, same thing. He's, he's a jump shooter. So if you can keep them on the perimeter, you should be able to secure the defensive rebounds, right? right. Um, this is the, the game where Cat has to do what Luka did in the second half. Like what Luke was doing in the first half, shooting a bunch of threes. In the second half, he used his size to get inside. Right? Yes. He pulling up mid-range, attacking, getting fouled. He used his height to his advantage and said, wait a minute, they're not very good back there. This is not right. the same series. So what what Kat and Rudy is good at, that doesn't affect this team right here. Right. Like we're we're big guards. And we're going to use our height. We're going to get down there, put more pressure on you. And that's what they did in the second half. Yeah. I really I really like the way Minnesota, because you know, Cat, a lot of times, excuse me, Cat, not Cat, Ant. Ant will, he'll look to score. But if you notice a lot of times, uh, uh, guys, he was looking, he was driving the ball, looking to kick for a three. Yeah. And Jay McDaniel was the beneficiary of that. <laughs> we saw Naz Reed. He was the beneficiary of that. Yeah. And, I, and look, they, they won the, the uh, the math was six to twenty five from the three, twenty four percent. The uh, Timberwolves was eighteen of forty nine, which is about thirty seven percent, thirty six point seven. And the the Mavericks shot forty, almost fifty percent. If you can shoot fifty, if it's going to be a Ocho, your pick is going to be in trouble because if you let Dallas shoot fifty percent with mm -hmm. all that height you got, with all mm -hmm. that size you got, you're going to be in trouble. I mean, now we know. So at some point in time, they're mm. gonna have Kyrie's gonna get hot from the three. Yeah, uh, Luca is gonna be. You know, instead of being three or ten, what if what say the sake of argument he goes six or twelve? Mm -hmm. Kyrie goes four of six. They made six six threes tonight. We know they're capable of making somewhere between ten and fifteen. Right. That means in order for you to keep what you got, do you're gonna have to keep doing minutes. Um. Uh. uh the Timberwolves, can you shoot 18 for 49? Mm -hmm. Can you shoot 18 or 40? Because I don't believe the Mavs are going to shoot any worse from the three in what they shot tonight. Gil, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't believe it. I don't believe Kyrie's going to go 0 for 3, have another 0 for. Luke yeah. is going to shoot 30% from the three. I don't believe that. I mean, but what we can also do is they can use their length and their size and their height to their advantage mm -hmm. and stop playing on the perimeter Cat, but that's who they are. Nas Reed. That's uh, who they are. Gerber. Hey, hey, play with your back to play with your back to the basket. Play down in the post. Ask run the offensive differently. Have have a different scheme. Ha, have a different scheme. Another way to approach the game. If you know you're taller, yeah, a little bigger, take advantage of those situations because they're undersized. Why continue to do the same thing and want to have a goddamn three point mid range contest? against a team that has, you could arguably say, better shooters at certain spots mm -hmm. in certain areas. Because this is who they are. You, how do I ask a bear not to take a dump in the woods when that's all he's ever done? Why do I, why are you asking, why are you asking the Timberwolves, say, guys, y'all seven foot Rudy, go seven plus foot Rudy, seven plus foot cat, I mean, at least seven, and mm -hmm. 6'10 to 6'11 Nash Reed. 
Why are you asking us to do something? How do you think they got here? I have a I have a question. Yes. Cat. Cat is not one dimensional. He chooses to play one dimensional. Mm -hmm. He chooses to play one dimensional. But if you want to, if you if you if you want to get your ass in home early, keep doing what you've been doing. Obviously, hell, the, the man's been watching film. They they yeah. know we like to play out on the perimeter. So yes. what are they gonna do? I'm gonna let him. <laughs> you said it. The, how do you tell a bear not to uh, shit in the woods? Easy. There's a bear trap right there. God damn it! You take that shit, you gonna <laughs> fall into it. And that's what this is. You over here shooting fifty damn threes. You're not going to win. You're shooting 18 for 49. You're not going to win that game because even though they look like they shot worse, they made it up in free throws. Right. Right. They made it up in free throws. They went 16 for 17 from the free throw line. So those little points that you got at the three-point line.
Second serve. 